In the shadow of one of the giants in the food industry, a dark and chilling reality lurks, one that few dare to mention. Nestle is a company founded by a young German chemistry enthusiast named Henry, who dreamt of solving a problem prevalent in his time, malnutrition and infections in young children. However, what this young pharmacist could never have imagined is that his dream would end up becoming a company that conceals in its history hundreds of deaths due to absurd lies, exploitation of natural resources, and violations of labor rights in underdeveloped countries. Nestle's murky past reveals a sad and harrowing panorama of deceit, abuse of power, and an insatiable appetite for money. While consumers enjoy their products, Thousands of people in disadvantaged countries suffer the consequences of this gigantic multinational. Let's delve into the depths of this dark history. Let's uncover the hidden secrets behind chocolates, cereals, coffees, ice creams, and many other products. It's time to open our eyes and face the harsh reality hidden behind the facade of this powerful company. Nestle. Henry Nestle was born on August 10th, 1814 in Frankfurt, Germany to parents Anna Maria Katharina Egemann and Johann Ulrich Matthias Nestle. He was part of a large family of 14 children, occupying the 11th position. His father, Johann, managed the family's glass business, providing a good source of income to the family. In the early 19th century, chemistry was not considered a science that could be learned at university. Pharmacists of the time obtained their education mainly through academic courses and training. After completing this training, the next step was to put into practice everything they had learned, either at home or abroad. As Henry was a chemistry enthusiast, he decided to move to Switzerland to complete his apprenticeship as a pharmacist, which he completed in 1833. Six years later, he became a pharmacy assistant, officially authorized to conduct chemical experiments and sell medicines. In 1843, Henry, not a wealthy man at the time, managed to secure financing and purchased a property in Gouvenas. This property included a house alongside an oil mill, a press, a sawmill, a distillery, sheds, a garden, and many other things. Here is where he initiated the manufacturing process of some products, such as vinegar and fruit spirits. He even bought some vineyards to produce grapes for use in the vinegar-making process. Henry, along with his wife Clementine, noticed that infant nutrition was a challenging problem to address at that time. It was impossible to find suitable substitutes for babies. Mothers fed their babies with milk from different animals since their babies did not like breast milk or were allergic. In addition, there were very poor hygienic conditions that endangered the baby's health. Henry wanted to solve these problems and saw the urgent need to create processed foods. One in every three children died due to the lack of good quality infant food substitutes. Finally, in 1835, Nestle developed the first baby food product, a combination of milk paste and sugar. However, shortly afterward, he admitted that it was not suitable for daily use and removed the milk paste from the mixture. By 1867, he had invented and produced some powdered dairy products, infant cereal. He began combining cow's milk with sugar and cereals like wheat and rice. In this way, he created a product that became a substitute for breast milk. At the age of 50, he had a thriving business that was approved by doctors and professionals in maternal care and gained great popularity in various countries such as Norway, the United States, Great Britain, Germany, and Spain. The creation of Lacteal Flour was the beginning and inspiration of Henry Nestle's great company. Over the years, he expanded his product line and joined forces with Peter Kyler Kohler, who, after years of effort, managed to find the perfect formula for milk chocolate in 1875. In addition to that success, another one would knock on the doors of Nestle's forged company. In 1938, the famous and popular Nescafe was invented, quickly becoming recognized worldwide as the preferred coffee of the American Armed Forces during World War II. After a period of expansion and at the age of 61, his wife Anna Clementine had many health problems. This led Henry to the decision to retire and sell his company. The new owners who took over Nestle had big plans to expand. In 1905, they merged with a rival company selling similar products named Anglo Suisse and together became known as the Nestle Group. By combining all their resources instead of competing, it allowed them to more easily dominate the market and expand their product lines. Sales seemed to be decreasing, and the Nestle group began to become even more greedy. 
They needed to deliver the company's most popular formula to every baby in the world to generate the highest possible profit. The company would make a masterful move, but at the same time, it would expose it to the world. In the early 1970s, concerns from doctors and nutritionists increased considerably in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Cases of malnutrition in very young babies being fed with breast milk substitutes were becoming more frequent. What alarmed specialists was not malnutrition itself, as that was a problem that had been dragging on for years. The new disturbing factor was malnutrition and infection reflected in a higher number of babies. They concluded that the cause of this problem could be related to the fact that babies were being fed powdered milk prepared under poor hygienic conditions. It was detected that in many cases, the bottles in which the preparation was packaged were not sufficiently clean. Sterilizing them correctly was challenging without the necessary resources. In other cases, the water was not potable or did not have the necessary hygiene level to avoid harming a newborn. Lack of education and illiteracy also presented themselves as a risk factor. Since mothers could not read the instructions, they often diluted the powder in a much larger amount of water than necessary, and the babies remained hungry. As a result, many babies ended up in the hospital due to malnutrition and dehydration. Here is when the question arises. If this turned out to be such a serious problem, why did mothers continue to feed their babies with this formula? Accusations were made about agreements with hospitals where the company had trained nurses who recommended to mothers to feed their children with powdered milk. Nestle began paying doctors and hospitals to sell its formula, telling mothers that it was better to use Nestle's formula than to breastfeed naturally. The company hired fake nurses responsible for delivering free product samples to mothers so that when these samples ran out, the mothers would no longer be producing natural milk and thus they would have no choice but to pay for Nestle's expensive product to keep their children alive. While this strategy had extraordinary results for the company, the consequences of these actions led to a major international scandal. It is estimated that millions of babies died or suffered severe nutrient deficiencies. In 2005, Nestle CEO Peter Brabeck stated that water is not a human right and should be privatized, words that the media criticized, and later he tried to justify that it was not what he meant and that anyone, regardless of where they live, has the right to have access to clean, safe water for drinking and cleaning. But if we look at some actions taken by the Nestle company, we can see that what he was saying was indeed true. In 2013, it was discovered that the company began diverting the consumption of clean water away from towns and cities in Pakistan, only to then bottle it in its factories and sell it to the population at a much higher price. The same happened when the company reached Paris and the United States. They began depleting water levels, forcing people to buy Nestle's bottled water, which was nothing more than the same water they had before Nestle started packaging it. In the United States, it was reported that Nestle pumped 747 liters of fresh water per minute from the reserves of the state of California. In total, the company owns more than 50 brands of bottled water, being the most famous and consumed in the world. The company was also accused of using water from aquifers, that is, water from underground wells, instead of spring water, as they claimed on their labels. It was also exposed that none of the eight springs owned by the company met the standards of the American Medicines Agency. Already in 2003, the company faced a class action lawsuit that ended in a $12 million settlement, where they themselves claimed that the water came from wells and not springs. Nestle is everywhere, from water to nutrition and health products. However, have you ever thought about how many hands your chocolate bar or the cereals you consume daily have passed through? The truth is that we almost never think about that. Nestle is accused of having engaged in forced labor and child exploitation on cocoa farms. This information did not come to light until 2000, when it was made public through a report that incriminated the company, emphasizing that the food giant was fully aware of the deplorable conditions in which children worked. The company set out to end forced labor by 2005. However, it all came to nothing. That same year, the International Labor Rights Fund sued Nestle, among other companies, claiming that three children, represented by this entity, were illegally trafficked from Mali to Ivory Coast. They also alleged that the children suffered physical abuse. 
Nestle's response was that it is impossible for them to verify the entire manufacturing process. Another situation that left the company in a bad light was against the government of Ethiopia in 2002, as the multinational demanded $6 million from one of the poorest countries on the planet. It seems that during the 1970s, the nation's military regime confiscated all assets from foreign companies and nationalized them. Subsequently, those assets were bought by Nestle. Under the pretext that all those assets that the African state confiscated now belonged to Nestle, the country would be in debt to them. While justice in some way supported Nestle's claim, they were in an inconvenient time since the nation was threatened by a famine that could have claimed the lives of more than 15 million inhabitants. With the money that the company demanded, clean drinking water could have been provided to a large part of the population. Despite knowing the situation and Nestle's large sales records, they continued with the lawsuit. Realistically, $6 million were nothing for Nestle. The media echoed this, and the population began to threaten boycotts, forcing the multinational to back down. Finally, the debt was settled for less than half of what was initially requested, and it was also promised that they would invest in the local economy. If you think Nestle's controversies end here, you are mistaken. For example, in 2007, Purina, one of Nestle's brands, was accused of selling contaminated pet food. These products had to be withdrawn from the market and registered cases of illness and even deaths in different animals. Throughout its history, the company has faced numerous accusations, but they have managed to build their economy and diversify their products. Despite the threats of boycotts from certain social sectors, it is impossible for them to be affected. The company is so large and has such a variety of products that when you go to a supermarket and buy any product, it is possible that it is owned by Nestle. It is incredible that Henry Nestle founded the company for a good cause, with the noble intention of helping solve nutrition and health problems in children. Still, the solid growth and malicious alliances displace this purpose to make more and more money, regardless of the cost. Did you know about all these Nestle controversies? If you want more stories, just click on this video. Hope to see you here. Remember to subscribe and like. Dream big and see you in the next one.